This episode is brought to you by Amazon. The holidays are here and you know what that means? It's time to get your friends and family the gifts they deserve. Take the stress out of shopping with Amazon's great deals and low prices on a huge range of items from toys to tech and much more. Whoever you're gifting for, Amazon has great prices on everything you need this holiday season. Shop early holiday deals now. When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Kroger, for thousands of appetizing ingredients that inspire countless mouth-watering meals. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week and up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with points. So you can get big flavors and big savings. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. And I understand kids can be kids. You know, I have children as well. How many kids do you have? Um, so I have three children. How old? Um, 12, four, and one year. Our daughter just turned one. And how many kids do you have? Five. And what's the age span? Um, 11, nine, six, four, and a year old. You done? Yeah. <laughs> Our boy was the last one, so. This is the plaintiff, Rachel Harris. She says the defendant is a friend of hers, but friend or no friend, his kid damaged her car and she needs to be paid for the repairs. That's right. His kid scratched the word Monday with a heart in her car. He's trying to deny that his kid did it, so she's suing for the $1,648.42 she's owed. This is the defendant, Damon Kelly. He says his kid never admitted to scratching the plaintiff's car, but to be a good neighbor and friend, he agreed to pay to have it buffed out. The greedy plaintiff, however, had her entire car repainted, and he's not paying for a whole new paint job. He's accused of scratching it up, but good. All parties, please use your right hand. What you are about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in civil court. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims and have their cases settled here before Judge Marilyn Millian in our forum, the People's Court. People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Millian is now presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. All right. Ms. Harris, you are suing Damon Kelly, Jennifer Kelly, and Jasmine is the child, right? Mm -hmm. And Jasmine for $1,648.42 to repair your car because, according to you, their child damaged it. Tell me what happened. Yes, Your Honor. Um, so we have uh, an apartment um, next door to them. Um, we share a lot of common areas with them. Um, and you folks were actually friends before they moved in, right? Yes. In fact, you're the one that gave them your landlord's number or your landlord their number so that they could move in yes, next yes, door. Right. And, um, okay, so how did it go once they moved in next door? Um, so, I mean, I understand kids can be kids. You know, I have children as well. How many kids do you have? Um, so I have three children. How old? Um, Twelve, four, and one year. Our daughter just turned one. And how many kids do you have? Five. And what's the age span? Um, 11, 9, 6, 4, and a year old. You done? Yeah. <laughs> Our boy was the last one, so. All right, and they all live with you. They're yeah. all, all right. And where's Jennifer? Uh, Jennifer's home with the kids because school and we didn't have nobody that could watch them. Okay. So what happens uh, after they move in? Kids will be kids, but, but what happens? Um, so, I mean, there's just been little instances here and there. Uh, you know, at one point we shared a garage, um, a two-bay garage. So one half was theirs, the other half was ours. Um, you know, there was just little things here and there. Like my husband had a cornhole board that, you know, got broken. So, you know, it's a little expensive to replace. Um, just little things like that, you know, like tools were being thrown around and stuff like that. You know, my husband had came to him, to Damon. Um, and let him know, you know, hey, listen, this got broken. And, you know, it was kind of like, oh, well, what, what can I do about it? You know. But, but what evidence did you have that it was their kids and not your kids? At that time, I didn't have any evidence. Okay. So, you know, I kind of just let it be, you know, let it go because both of our children were out there. It wasn't really much to prove. Um, the only reason I'm even really pursuing it, this is because I can prove 
Um, you know, like little things. I've noticed little scratches on my car here and there. Crown at one point, but I just what, what do you mean crown? Crown, like pink crown, like on the hood crayon? of the crayon. Crayon. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I pronounced no, that's all right. I didn't know what you meant. All right. Um, so like just little things like that. But I mean, I couldn't. Who's you know, watching the kids when they're because they're little? I mean, well, right. I mean, so because um, I don't think a twelve-year-old is going to be. Drawing Correct. with crayon on a car. It's going to be one of the tiny ones. So who's watching the kids out there? So, I mean, we have, like I said, we have a common area. So a lot of times, like, I'm in or out, they're in is or out. Is it fenced in or no? Yes. Yes, it is okay. a fenced in, in backyard. All right. All right. All right. Um, Go on. This particular instance, you know. Are the cars in the backyard? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, we never had an issue. Like I mean, like I said, well, I couldn't I prove. We, we, yeah, we've got crayon on the cars. You know, but I mean, anytime that there's something that got brought up, you know, we tried to deal with it, um, you know, amicably as adults. Um, so this particular instance, I had just got back from dropping my two boys off with their father. So I have they're from a previous. Um, so the marking was not there when I dropped when I left. Okay. I came home, came back inside, came back outside. Me and him were going. Shop, grocery shopping or something and came back out to the damages on the vehicle. Okay. Um, and who had been out there or you didn't know? My children were out there earlier, like before we had left. Um, I don't know. You know, that was the argument was her children weren't outside, so it couldn't have been her children. What was written on your car? Um, it says Monday with a heart. And there's like a, a line. I don't know if you can see, but there's a line underneath of it. Yeah, I can see it mm -hmm. just fine. What What do you think it was made with? Can you tell? A rock. There's a lot of like debris, like rocks laying around. So that's, that's what I believe it was done with. Was it a Monday? It was a Friday. Oh, <laughs> it wasn't Monday. No. I, yeah, I'm like wondering why <laughs> someone's celebrating Monday. Yes. I don't, Jeez. I don't know. What kind of car is this? It is a 2013 Hyundai Santa Fe Sport that I'm still paying for. I'm still financing. Uh, okay. At this point in time, how is your relationship with each other? Um, it was a little strained. Um, okay. Not really. Because I'm like, you know, when they move in, it's uh, Lucy, Ricky, Fred, and Ethel. Right. And then when does it get strained? Because of the kids? Um, not really particularly because of the children. Just uh, his wife and I became really close friends. Um, and it was more so just like the things with the kids. We had shared a garage. So it was like, you know, every time, you know, we had differences on making the payment on the garage. And then I kind of feel like it just escalated. Um, and then this was like the icing on the cake of things. You know, it was already kind of strange. So who said what to whom once you walked out and saw that? So I told my husband, um, you know, I really think that you should say something to him. Um, Jennifer and I are, are friends. I don't really, you know, want to. Are the boys friends or not really? Yeah, I mean, yes, like, you know, but not, I wouldn't say as close as, as, as Jennifer and I. Okay. Um, so I asked my husband, you know, do you think that you could say something? So we were actually pulling out and we have a porch. So he was getting ready to text message him when he just so happened to be walking outside. So um, Chris gets out of the car and the car is parked like, you know, on an angle where you can see the damage. And Chris says, um, one of the kids scratched the car, you know, her car out here. And he didn't say anything. He turned around, went back in the house, and called Jennifer. Okay. So we sat there for a couple minutes, not too long, but just waiting for someone to, like, come and look at it and just have an adult conversation, which never happened. So does she ever call you or she doesn't call no, you, you guys we've just not ever had any like face to face discussions really about about the matter no face to face no face to face she won't talk to me face to face so uh so this relationship is pretty wrecked uh, it's it's destroyed and uh, you know it's unfortunate yeah that's my wife doesn't do petty your honor and we're here as a result of the end of pettiness what do you mean um you like first like with the garage with they had the garage yeah i would sometimes be late you know i was uh I got lost my job. My wife was the only one working. I'm home with the kids, so we would sometimes be late. So we would work out. Oh, hey, we'll pay you late. You know, whatever, whatever. Uh, Mr. Harris had messaged me and said, "Hey, the landlord said you got to get your stuff out of the garage," which I didn't understand. She leased the garage; it was in her name, so I didn't understand why the landlord had anything to do They're with that. They're just saying that because it's less awkward than saying, "If you're not going to pay on time, you need to get your stuff yeah, out." Yeah, which I right, understand. which makes perfect sense. And, if you're not going to pay never, on time, then I get never, out. I never denied that with them. You right. Know, I, I so always, how is that petty on their part if you're late all the time? It's not. It's not just maybe not late all the time. Maybe once here or there. But what it really comes down to is their relationship was strained when me and my wife, our relationship was strained. Rachel was there for my wife. I appreciate that. 
But when I came back into the picture and tried uh, to work stuff out with my wife. So you don't necessarily approve of him as a mate for your friend? That, I mean, I wouldn't say necessarily, but that, I don't think that has anything to do with any, any, anything that has happened to my car moving forward. It does, though. It has, it has to do with maybe the relationship between the two of them, well, but I, maybe so, not with the car. Do, do you, did one of your kids do that to her car, yes or my, no? None of my kids ever admitted to it. I use process of elimination that one of my kids, you know, there's only one kid that spells Monday with you. Ja Jasmine is not the daughter that she doesn't admit to her wrongs. I mean, it, it all happened in a matter of 30 seconds where she was out the house, snuck out, done it. Oh, I, did I, she, wait, so one of your daughters did it? I, I don't have proof that she did it. I she never think, admitted she did it? She never came out of her mouth and said she did it. We told them that Jasmine did it based on the fact that I have these many kids. This is the one kid that spells it with a U. Lo and look, I'm sorry. I just talked to Jasmine. She admitted to doing it. Take a look at that text that your I, wife sent. Wait, she, I don't know WTF is wrong with her or how she managed that. I, when she's saying she admitted it, it's admitted it more on, Jasmine, did you do this? You know, no answer, no silence. Where normally, if my kids... Well, that's not what she said. She said that Jasmine admitted it. <clears throat> okay. I mean, I'm just reading I, it. I know, and I'm... It's... Hey, I'm sorry, girl. I'm not trying to cause any more problems for you guys. I don't have much money to, for you to fix at the moment, but I guess you can add it to the tab. What, add it to the tab, why? Um, add it to the tab being... So, what? He, going back to what he was saying, like, our relationship did become strained. It was not the fact that, you know, everybody has their faults, whatever their relationship problems were or their relationship problems. I was a good friend. I was there for her. That's beside the point. Um, the tab being they still owed me money for the garage. Um, and at this point, I just felt um, taken advantage of um, because I was there for her many, many times as a friend. And, you know, my car got damaged and it was kind of just like, oh, well, throw it on the tab. You know, that's another thing that went wrong. Actually, I'm, I'm, I seldom see, hey, let me take that back. One of my kids just confessed. and Let me tell you about how my kid confessed. I never see that. For after this, I think the day after or something, I can't remember exactly, um, I'm going to get it looked at. You know, we were still civil. Like, I, I, you know, I understand, you know. In fact, I, 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 you gave me a series of texts, and then she gave me a series of texts. And I actually see, and I think it was in her text, what I, I see this effort on both your parts to kind of patch it up. You were the one who started it. Yes. You, uh, start, uh, you were the one who reached down and gave the olive branch, is what I mean. Yes. And then what happened? Neither one of you walked out of your apartments and hugged and kissed and you just texted? What's up, guys? It's the champ, Sean O'Malley, here to talk to you about prize picks. Prize picks the best place to win real money while watching football. Run your game on prize picks. Prize picks will give you $50 instantly when you play your first $5 lineup. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Just download the Prize Picks app and use code SPOTIFY. That's code SPOTIFY on Prize Picks to get $50 instantly when you play a $5 lineup. Prize Picks, run your game. Must be present in certain states. Visit prizepicks.com for restrictions and details. How old are you? I'm about to be 32. And how old's your wife? She's, uh, she'll be 28 this next month. Yeah, this is a problem. This is the problem with, with, you know? Like, when you talk to somebody face to face, you know what happens? Empathy. You look into their eyes, you see the tears forming, and you interpret what is coming out of their mouth a different way than if you read it and give it your own spin because you're angry and there's baggage and whatever else, right? Absolutely. Um, so for some people, it's not worth it. Just stay away from each other and communicate by text with your neighbor who you hate and everything else. But for two people who are really good friends, that's when you put your little phones down into their cradles or their chargers, and then you walk outside and have a cup of coffee or, or scotch or a glass of wine or whatever it is and commiserate about the eight children that live 10 right. feet from each other. Right. Uh, because you guys are, it's kind of you guys against them, right? And, um, and there's... You know, I saw what you guys said about your kids back and forth, kind we, of. We bonded on that. You that bonded kids are on hard, the concept. You know. I, I, I don't know whether to say it out loud or not because it sounds so bad, but I'm a mother, so I totally yes. get it. Yes. Right? Our kids are little blah, blah, blahs. And, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, um, you know, it's kind of, it's, uh, it's just a shame that you have somebody in your same position right next door and, um. You know, and you guys can't just talk to each other. I was really hoping she would be here and you would stay home and take care of the kids. All right. 
I know, but I was the one who the letter for the certified letter was mailed to first. And yeah, but I'm the one that deal that dealed with her as to working it out and trying. Well, how, to, what happened with the attempt to work it out? Um, I had talked to Chris. Chris told me about it. I didn't walk in the house to ignore them. It was there's five kids in my house. There's a lot going on. They had just got home from school. It was whose fault is that? That's ours. I oh, never, okay. I, I would say it's five never kids say, in my house, Judge. I you never know? say it's not, you know, you, I, I'm enduring it. You know, not, I, I, I understand, but you're not enduring it. You brought them into the world, yeah. and you don't need to be impolite by turning your back and walking away and, when they say that. And I agree that that, that, yeah. that was wrong. Yeah, that was rude. I, I, All right. I do agree that that was yeah. wrong. So I talked to Chris, and, you know, he had to, stated to me, you know, oh, uh, you know, uh, I guess my brother can get some stuff to kind of buff it out. Um, I'm going to talk to him. And I said, okay, that's fine. You know, Did anybody know. ever try to buff it out? No. No, because it's... Why didn't they could, try, though? if you rub it, you could feel that it's in the paint. Like, yeah, pretty the, much. People who do that know that when it's deep enough, and sometimes not yeah, even I that deep of, is deep I enough, know. but I, I got to be honest with you, that one looks deep enough. Yeah. And so what happens then? You take it to the dealership, and it's how much? So I took it to uh, Tomlin Brothers, which is a place that's reputable in our, in our neighborhood, um, and I had them look at everything, and, and I got an estimate. And she explained to me that the people that looked at it explained to me the position of where it is being on the door and being on the side. The reason why it is so much is because they said that they would have to blend the entire paint on on that you know, side to, to match. Right, and but it's not painting the whole car. No, it's, it's sixteen hundred dollars is the body work for just solving the problem. No, yes, Your Honor. and <laughs> blending the. Let me see the entire estimate. Yes, the, the, the sixteen hundred dollars in the estimate was to paint the entire vehicle. How do you know? Because she she sent me the estimate and a certified Okay, so letter. let's see. Did you ever try to pay somebody to uh, to see if they could buff it out? No, because he told me he was going to see what his brother Yeah, no, but his brother-in-law said no, and if you're maintaining that it, this should be able to be done cheaper because it'll buff right out, why didn't you then pay somebody the 100 bucks to detail it to see if it bu buffs right I out? I tried to offer to do that, but they never uh, said they would or I can't do that without the vehicle or something. No, I know, but if, you, if, if someone had said to you, hey, let's try this first and see if it works, would you have said, no way? It would have been better. It would have been, it would have been nice to even have it acknowledged. I was never have it offered. offered. Right. I was never offered. All right. When this first happened, one of your kids, like you, you actually lived next door to each other when you gave birth? Yes. To the last ones? Yes. We were pregnant at the same time. Right. <clears throat> and then one of your kids turned one first. Which one? Theirs did. And did they have a little party or something? Or you... Not that I'm aware of. Um, but it... I know one of the things you said in your text was, I can't believe I missed the first birthday. Um because I really thought our children would be friends for life. It was so painful to read. And then uh, she said, please, please invite me to your kids first or something like that. Well, that was like the perfect opportunity for you two to actually. Their, their children came. Their okay. children came. But they she didn't? didn't. But she, no. Because um, I, things were still stressed? So I reached out to her. I'm sure you've seen the text messages. Um, trying, you know, to apologize for my part of things because things escalated far more than they should have. Um, <clears throat> I felt very hurt because I thought this was my, they were my friends. Um, and I feel like it could have been handled way differently. Um, I did give them an opportunity to pay towards it. Um, you know, sh they explained to me like, I don't have it all at once, which I understand, you know, and, and I expressed that. But when I said, okay, look, we need to figure out how much, you know, I already have to hunt you down for the garage money. I didn't want to have to keep doing that. That was what was already. How many straining. times had, had they been laid on the garage money? Um, Quite a few. I like what's quite exactly. a few? Two or eight? Probably almost every month. So um, how many is that? I don't know how many months are there. Well, we we've been there for almost two years. We had, we had it for a little over a year. Um, so six months. Okay. Which you know wasn't an issue. It's just things like that. When I wanted what was owed to me, I was then being petty, I guess. Right. Um, so I had reached out, you know, and. The but like, what happened when you two are reaching out to each other with <clears> this <throat> sisterly love on these texts? What happens? Just you both stay in each other's houses and you don't talk to each other? I mean, I've other? tried to get her to come out and, you know what I mean, I, I've, I've offered that. I've extended the branch, as you said, um, to try to make amends of things. But it sounded like you guys were making amends. But it's I, that's why I was like, wait, it's like it's like I'm reading a novel and the last 30 pages are missing. It's always, and I've invested all this time it's and I really me. want to know how it ends, right. you know? It's, it's and, always me reaching out. Um, and kind So of it just, just kind of got left in the air with those texts? 
Yeah, like, you know, I, I've texted her since then. I mean, I just texted her the other day. Like, I'm thinking of you. Uh, how and what does she say when she you She ignores do? me. She blatantly Now she ignores, ignores you. But she wasn't ignoring you then. And the stuff yeah, I read, I she was. I don't know if that, you know, if she was just trying to keep the peace because of it. I don't know. I, I, tr I have tried. Listen, you guys live there. I don't. I don't think it's in anyone's best interest to have this kind of chilly relationship with your neighbors, especially when your kids are all enmeshed like this. And especially when really because you guys were such good friends. Right. That's really what's sad because I can see the pain and the hurt. Um, and when you say, my wife doesn't do petty, that doesn't help that, the situation. That, that came out wrong. Yeah, it did. Part. Right, I'm it not, did. Like you said, with the relationship, it, it does pain It's a me. shame because it's also for your children. Your yeah, children, you want to have another mother watching your kids and reporting to you. I, I, you know, and, you and want I agree, that. Um, do something. You I, guys I do something. Fix it. Nah, nobody's trying that hard. I know she's trying. That I do know. She is trying because I can see over and over when she's trying. But I think that both sides should try again. And drop me a line. Show me, send me a picture of the eight children and the four, you know, just, I don't know. Make me happy. Nobody ever follows up on that. Either <laughs> no, that or I mean, my staff doesn't met, give it to it me. It was the greatest summer of both of our friendships. I mean, we met on a camping trip through another friend. We hit it off, but you know our kids was as you said bleep bleep bleeps. So we, <laughs> we bond bonded, you know, right? Uh, over thinking your kids are blah blah blah. We, we we bonded over that at the campfire, and then after that, you know, the year, you know, I I regardless of what happened with this, I valued our friendship. You know, what I mean, I'm always, you know, my my wife is she, you know. I know there's a lot going on in your house. She's very stubborn. I, I, well, your wife needs to unstubborn herself, and I read your wife's text. I don't know if you did. But your wife is in pain. And, I know. And she's not, she doesn't come off on these texts as stubborn. No. She I did know. it. She came off as, I also want to patch it. So are you, I have a question for you. Are you stopping her from patching? No, Your Honor. I, because I that love would be them. nuts for your wife and your kids. No, Your Honor. Right. I love them. I think a lot of it has to do with my, you know, I, I could be a better husband. I don't do as much as I should with the kids. You know, my wife works 10 hours a day, comes home, still helps me with the kids. You know, a lot of that is on me. You know what I mean? I should be a better husband for her. And when I wasn't, Rachel was there for her. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want us to not be friends. Like, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be where we're at now. You know what I mean? Like, I was on the verge of losing everything, and Rachel was like, my landlord can help you out. Give me a text. And we had an awesome summer that year back there. You know what I mean? Being friends and, and our kids together and growing up and playing. And, like, that's not what I want. You know what I mean? When they, they had a party for their daughter the other day, and... You know, it's everything's just so strange. Don't I don't want to go out there. You know, she invited my son to come over. I go over with him. It's it's just awkward. You know what I mean? Like this this isn't what I want. You know, I don't want to be here being sued because my daughter made a mistake. You know what I mean? I want to go camping and you know what I mean to water parks and stuff like we planned on doing. Right. So then when your daughter admits to having done it, then there should have been some effort to pay, right? And um, look, people make mistakes, you know? Absolutely. And a six-year-old, um, it, 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 she, she doesn't have the mental capacity at six to I be I have behavioral children, so I definitely understand. Oh, even just like a not behavioral <laughs> right. issue, six-year-old doesn't have them. But the parents are supposed to be supervising the children, and so I am going to hold the parents liable. I'm not going to hold them liable for the hood, though. Okay. So I've done the calculations and removed the hood. Um, and so in a minute, I'm going to tell you what my ruling is and how much, what, what portion of this bill I feel you're responsible for. But there's a, pic a bigger picture here, and I know what's in your soul because I, you know, God bless Tex. You guys, well, for me, as evidence, but you guys need to rely less on it and more on human empathy and face-to-face. -face. But for me, I see the evidence I couldn't otherwise see. Right. When I see the raw delivery of a text to people, you know, back and forth, I know you love her and I know you want to patch it up. And so somebody be the bigger person, just try it in person. But in person, try it in person. Make her try it in person if she's really being stubborn like that. Because, I mean, it's obvious to me that this is a very painful thing for everyone. And it would just be so much better. Um, and part of the first step to making it better is getting this out of the way. So I'm gonna get it out of the way, but after that, you're on your own. And you guys are living, listen, your friends are the family you choose, right? I love my family, don't get me wrong, but... Um, Takes a village, man. Right. Right, Takes a village. especially the way you guys, you know, with, with the, the mess of kids you guys have, and then the age, that, the fact that they're close in age, especially right. the one-year-olds, you know, it's just, it's, it, um, it's, it could be 
the most wonderful thing or it could be the worst thing or it could be a temporary wonderful it's thing. It's been a little bit of both. <laughs> right. And let, let's try to make it, let's everybody be better. Everybody just do better and be better uh, for the sake of your children, but also, frankly, for the sake of your sanity. Right. Because you should be in the position to help each other out, not hurt each other. Right? Absolutely. Good luck, folks. My verdict in this case, after I take out the hood, the uh, damage, and it is expensive, because body work is expensive. That's I don't problem. know that. Yeah, I, I do. <laughs> is right? It's, it's $984.57, verdict for the plaintiff. Thank you, Your Honor. So, after hearing the testimony in this uh, really tantalizing case, the judge fines for the plaintiff for $984. She really gave you both some advice, and I'm wondering what you're thinking right now. Um, yeah, hopefully we can uh, put this behind us and work on, um, you know, communicating better in the future and, uh, you know, working our differences out. Do you think it's possible that this meeting here in the courtroom might be the, the key that brings you guys back together again? Um, only time will tell. Uh, I mean, hopefully we're not back here. Um, but no, hopefully, you know, time will tell whether we can, you know, mend this or just, you know, keep our distance. All right, let's see, uh, let's see how Mr. Kelly feels about it. I felt sorry for Mr. Kelly. He was, he's really bothered by this situation. I think you could see it, too, obviously. Mr. Kelly, do you think this will help you guys at all? Um, I really hope so. Um, you know, I've, like I said, I value their friendship. Uh, they mean a lot to me and my whole family. So I really hope that this can kind of, you know, bury the hatchet, so to say. Well, you know, I think everybody is rooting for you. Let's put it that way. Even though you owe over $900 to them, uh, that's the judge's decision. I know you're not shocked by that, are you? No, that, not at all. That you lost? No, I'm not. I'm, yeah, yeah, you fine. know, as parents, we got to take responsibility for our children. And I think it's a lot of parents that don't do that. So, you know, I'm glad I could at least step up and be like, you know, my daughter did it. It's the amount that was in question. And I'm glad that we were able to get that settled away. That's an amazing case, Harvey. Um, he was really affected. What do you think? So, Doug, uh, you should know the laws about parental responsibility vary from state to state. There are some states that say that a parent is only responsible if a kid engages in willful misconduct. There are other states that say if a kid engages in negligent misconduct, parent is still responsible for that. But in this case, this involves a duty to supervise a child, especially a young child. And that's pretty much a constant in most states. What famous person, dead or alive, are you related to? You mean besides you? You're kind of, <laughs> you're kind, you're kind of it, really, for me. Um, probably my cousin Dave, who we call Bone, um, who was the mayor of Vail, Colorado, for a couple Hell of yeah. terms until recently. Great. But after that, I'm like, I scratch my head and I go, I don't know. He's kind of, he's kind of the A-list celebrity in the family. You're probably the B-list, and, I'm, and yeah. I'm the C-list. <laughs> Right? Something like that. Because he, everybody knows Bone, right? If you go out to Colorado. Right. If you ski and veil, you know who right. he is. Exactly. This is the plaintiff, Christina Merrifield. She says the defendant's a very irresponsible person who let her vicious dog roam the streets and it attacked her poor defenseless dog, Rocky, injuring him badly. That's right, the beast latched onto him with the full force of his massive jaws, and the defendant refuses to pay for the emergency vet bill she now has. Luckily, Rocky will survive, but she wants the $3,000 she's owed, and she is suing for just that today. This is the defendant, Nancy Canizaro. She says the plaintiff left her a nasty text claiming her dog, Diamond, injured her Jack Russell mix. The woman's trying to gouge her out of three grand, when all she can see from the photos is a little scratch on the dog's jaw. The defendant says she's being unfairly charged for other things and refuses to be ripped off by the likes of the plaintiff. She's accused of a doggy disaster. All parties, please hit your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff says the defendant allowed her vicious dog to roam the streets. That dog attacked her dog, and she wants money for the vet bills. But the defendant says the plaintiff's dog got a little scratch on his nose, and she's trying to gouge her for three grand. It's the case of scratch and sniff. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. 
Okay, Ms. Merrifield, you're suing Ms. Canazano for $3,000 in damages as a result of her dog biting your dog. Tell me what happened. So me, my boyfriend, and my son were walking our dog down the street. and her What kind of dog old, do you have? He is a Jack Russell Hound mix. Okay. We got him from the pound, so we're not really, like, completely yeah. sure. Okay, go on. Um, her pit bull was down the street. And Did you recognize it. it as her pit bull? Is she a neighbor of yours? Do you know her? I don't. We actually just recently moved into this house. Okay. so We you, just saw the loose dog. You see a loose dog, and do you recognize it to be a pit bull? Um, it was pretty far away. We tried turning around to go the other way, and it came running after us. Okay. And what happened? So it latched onto my dog. It was biting his face, his paws. My boyfriend was holding him. I mean, my... 12-year-old son was trying to get involved. I kept telling him to stay back. And eventually, I just told my boyfriend, I said, just let my dog go because he's getting eaten over here. Uh, what? Because your boyfriend and, was doing what? Trying to pull him or what was your... Yeah, he was trying to break up the fight. Right. So you said, let the dog go and what? And we just let my dog go. So he ran. Oh, okay. So, I mean, yeah. luckily, he didn't run out into the street. Right. My son went and caught him, but... Right. Okay. And then did you take the dog to the vet? I did, yes. All right. And what did the vet conclude? Was there anything that needed stitching or no? Uh, he didn't get stitches. They did an x-ray and stuff. It was very close to his bone that the dog bit him on his paw. Um, he said he, they said they just missed the bone. Um, he had to get antibiotics. He was on three different antibiotics. He had to get a um, rabies shot. And they put a cone on him so that he couldn't lick his paws or anything. Right. He was bleeding so much. I had to carry him home because he couldn't even walk. Right. How big was the vet bill? How much was the vet bill in total? I believe it was like 600 maybe $700. I'm not completely sure. Okay. And can I ask you, how did you find out who the dog belonged to? Her, Nancy's son got in the car. He saw all this going on. He went and got in his car and drove after the dogs. And he, we kept asking him who his name was. He wouldn't give us his name. He didn't want to give us any information. I got his license plate number, and we went and looked to see where the car was at so I could get her address. Okay, and have you ever talked to Ms. Canazano? Nope. Okay, did anybody ever pay you any part of the, of the vet bill? She did pay me part of okay, it. Okay, so um, how did that happen if you never spoke to her? Did, did your husband speak? My boyfriend. Your boyfriend spoke to her. Okay. So your boyfriend speaks to her, tells her what the vet bills are, and she pays a portion of it, correct? Yes. She All agreed right. she was going to pay the whole thing. And then afterwards... And then afterwards, what happened? Uh, she said she wasn't paying at all. She said that she didn't think it was necessary that he got x-rays. Ms. Canizano, what's going on? Um, I wasn't home at the time, and apparently my, um, the dog got out. And um, my son was here, and he realized the dog got out from behind the fence. How did the dog get out? She dug a hole under the fence, okay. which we have since fixed. But okay. she dug a hole under the fence, I guess, and got out. And then he realized that she had gotten out and then went to get her and, and saw the scuffle, I guess, at the end of the street. Then he wound up calling me when he got home, so I knew what was going on. Then they contacted me and uh, by text originally, not by uh, via phone, I don't believe. And um, it was from her boyfriend. I think his name is Randy. Right. His, and uh, so you you went ahead and paid because you know your dog. And why is it always a pit bull, Douglas? That gets talking loose. about that, weren't we? Right. I, it's always a pit bull. Who we gets still loose. can't answer that question. Why? Because <laughs> if there's any dog you should be more careful with, it's a pit bull because of their nature to to do a lot of damage. Uh, by latching on and not letting go. I just don't understand. I, I understand pit bulls. I don't understand pit bull owners. So uh, you have decided to pay all of her out-of-pocket costs except $247 for x-rays, and you refuse to pay that, and your reasoning is what? I didn't think it was necessary. Um, I know she took it to a vet, but um, that particular vet is known for high fees. Um, but aside from that, I just, I mean, she sent me pictures. I don't know if you've seen the pictures. And the pictures of the jaw, I mean, there's a couple scrapes. So I just thought that that was unnecessary. If it was your dog, would you have thought it was necessary? No. Let's see. If you don't take x-rays, how are you going to know if any bones are broken? Poor doggy. How's the dog doing now? Uh, he's doing all right. It took him a while to want to go back outside. 
But he couldn't even walk for a week. I had to call out of work because I had to take care of him. Um, you say you had to take a week off from work. Do you have any evidence of that? Uh, not with me, but I could get it from my job. Okay. And how much are you paid per week? Um, I'm a server. Yeah, that doesn't answer my question, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd say anywhere from four to $500 a week. Yeah, but how are you going to prove that? Are a lot of that tips that you're... You may or may not be reporting. I don't know. Like how, in other yeah. words, when you come to court, you have to be able to prove what it is that you're out. So you can't right. just, um, I need to see evidence that you were out the number of days you say you were out. And I need to see evidence of what you make and from your employer. And I need to, you know, like that kind of thing. Do you have any of that with you? I don't think I have any. Because you're suing like... for a thousand dollars in lost wages. So you, you... Uh, not only that, I missed a craft show, too. I have a small business, um, so I missed a craft show that I usually make anywhere from five, six $600. Right, you would have to prove that as well. And you're also suing for $1,700 in emotional distress. I'm sure this was emotionally distressing, but in a dog bite case, your emotional distress is not relevant and the dog's is not compensable. You understand what I'm saying? Like, those aren't... Um, emotional distress cases. All right, I'm gonna most definitively order Ms. Canizano to pay the $274 of the balance of the vet bill, but uh, I will give you 24 hours to submit evidence of what your actual losses are. I mean, anybody can say I work at, you know, I would have made, uh, if I had gone to a fair, I would have made, that's very speculative. If you're able to show me that you missed X days of work by having something from your employer that says that and how much you make, I'll, I'll consider that because that okay. would be something that happened to you as a result of the pit bull getting loose. And Ms. Canizano, she wasn't even, she had, wasn't even asking for that. All she wanted was when she was out of pocket. And you rolled the dice and said, well, I've decided that wasn't necessary, so I'm not going to pay you that. What do you think was going to happen? Of course, then she's going to come to court and sue for what she's out of pocket. And now she's also going to sue for her lost wages because she had to stay home and take care of the dog. Um, you know, so this turned out to be a bad gamble on your part. Uh, so right now, $274, verdict for the plaintiff, and I will uh, reconsider that in terms of lost wages if I receive any evidence that I find persuasive uh, in the next 24 hours. All right? Good luck, folks. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So the plaintiff prevails at the moment, only $274 she's going to get, but she may get more if she can provide evidence to the judge in 24 hours. Ms. Canizaro, uh, as the judge said, this was a bad bet on your part not to pay that, uh, the x-ray fees. How, how do you feel about the judge's verdict? You do have to pay it. The only reason I didn't pay it was, I, I don't know if you were, if you saw the pictures, if you saw what just happened. In I saw the pictures. I saw yeah, the pictures. It was it was a scratch. That's how I felt. And I mean, um, I have a pit. My pit looks more like a, a greyhound than a pit. It's not one of those vicious pits that, I mean, everybody that walks in the house, my all my friends, my son and my daughter's friends that come in here, it's friendly. You know, it, it doesn't go after any anybody. Um, well, you know, it did this time. It went out on the street, ran down the street and attacked another dog. How do you answer that? Uh I wasn't even home, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry it happened. All right. Well, listen, Ms. Merrifield, uh, you heard the judge. She she needed more evidence from you. If you can provide that, you may get more money. Can you do that? Will you work on that in the next, in the next gonna, 24 hours? Yep, I'm going to okay. go over to my job as soon as we're done. I think that's a smart thing to do, my dear. Good luck. Good luck. And I hope Thank your puppy, you. you know, recovers fully from this. I know. Traumatic Thank experience you. for a dog. Had to be. Okay. Yes. All righty, that'll bring this case to a close. Uh, Mr. Levin, what are you thinking, Harvey? So, Doug, in most states, look, if she was bitten, she could get pain and suffering. If the dog is bitten, in most states, the answer is you can't get pain and suffering. Now, the law is changing some so that you can get more money if a dog is injured, more than the value of the dog. But in terms of pain and suffering, that, my friends, is an uphill climb. If you own a mobile home and rent the space for your home, are the owners of the park responsible for damages to your home from tree branches? A very big tree branch broke off a tree and went right through my roof. Oui. Let's first answer the question, which is, 
Only if they knew that the tree was diseased right. and you're able to prove that they knew it and right. they knew it was a hazard and they didn't maintain it properly and didn't, um, right. didn't chop it up. Otherwise, if it's just a tree and it's a windstorm, it's an act of God and, and you're kind they're of not going to be luck. responsible. In fact, you, you want to find out also, you might want to talk to the people there and say, hey, do you guys have insurance to cover That damage? covers that, yeah. where usually, uh, you know, insurance Everything's doesn't. Everything's excluded. Yeah, right. Everything that's likely to happen is probably not covered by right. the insurance. Windstorm, forget about yeah, it. Yeah, right, 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 right. So it's kind of, it's going to And be even a, with windstorm, trees are often excluded right. from the windstorm. Right. So, unless, so if the tree, but if the tree hits your house, your house will be right. covered. But so you should... Hopefully you have insurance. Hopefully the place has insurance. Hopefully one of those two insurances pay. But if the, you're asking me the raw question, in the end, will I be able to get it from the mobile home right. park owner? The answer is the same thing it is when it's your neighbor. Right. Uh, if it's an act of God, it's an act of God. If yeah. they did something negligent, then they'll have to pay. That's a tough spot to be in because yeah. I think chances are they're going to be out of luck. They're going to have yeah. to figure out a way to pay for it. Yeah.